I want to look at the renminbi. This is part of our foreign exchange report. And I haven't talked much about dollar renminbi uh, in ages. And you can see up here, this has been a quiet story. I spoke to a major Chinese executive today, and he was forceful about America solving his problems. 6.31 yuan. Neil Ferguson of Harvard, that's a long way. They've done their part in this crisis, haven't they? At least on an economic basis. Yeah, I mean, in, in many ways, if you take China out of the equation over the last four years, the world is in something much more like a Great Depression. China's been the engine of growth, and it's going it's going quiet, the whole story of currency manipulation. It's less and less plausible to say China is a major part of the problem. Mm. China must get its house in order. The Chinese have been saying consistently, no, you in the West have to get your houses in order. And as for Europe, if you guys want money, you better show signs that you're serious about structural right. reform. So, yeah. Right. Let's bring up too much information on Eastern Europe. Another topic less spoken of here as China is we worry about peripheral U.S. I would say the real economy effects on Eastern Europe are just as great as some of these liquidity solvency issues of the periphery. Sure, it's often forgotten that there's been huge volatility in Eastern Europe, some of the biggest shocks Look in the Poland world. Here. Right. Poland so, industrial manufacturing rolling over. I mean, again. Poland, I'm a big fan of Poland. Poland is probably the best run of the Central East mm -hmm. European countries. It's had the best uh, performance. It's done the most to reform its economy. It has a terrific uh, uh, government foreign minister, Radek Sikorsky, is one of the stars of the European stage, I think destined for greatness, did a fantastic speech just before the year end in Berlin mm -hmm. when he said, you know, for once we in Poland want to see the Germans doing more stepping up to yeah. sort this crisis out because the crisis in the Eurozone does have big effects on the non-Euro countries to the east. Hungary is a huge worry right now. Probably the dodgiest government in Eastern Europe uh, under considerable pressure because of the distinctly suspect moves being made by its oh. government from the Europeans. So this is a big story. Right. Let's rip up the script. This is really important. We, you and I could go an hour on this. Maybe we will over a drink tonight. Now, Ferguson, when you look at Hungary, is the turmoil politically in Europe a move back to a left? Or is it a turmoil to a conservative right? Or is it a turmoil to, and I use this word with great respect, some modern fascism or structure of, of a more tyrannical Europe. Which way does that go? I think the key word here, Tom, is populism. And populism can be both on the left or on the right. It's almost inevitably anti-incumbent. So if the incumbent is conservative, the populist will be on the left. If the, if the incumbent mm -hmm. is on the left, the populist will be to the right. I mean, Hungary is a bit nerve-wracking because we're seeing some strains of a populism that brings back unhappy memories so of the interwar years. Spain or right. the interwar years, uh, But, yes. but my, my sense is that here the European Union has a great record in, in restraining moves to the right. Remember when Jörg Haider was riding high in uh, Hungary's neighbor Austria yeah. and, and it seemed like a really quite radically nationalist government yes. was going to come to power in Vienna. It was essentially closed down by mm. Europe because you have to behave yourself politically to be an accepted member right. of the European club. And I think we're credit where it's due. That has worked well. So I don't worry too much about this. I, I worry a little bit more about what's going on uh, in Western Europe because there's going to be a big cloud of political uncertainty over France okay. until the presidential elections well. there. Unfortunately, we have to go. Neil Ferguson, thank you so much with Harvard uh, University.